I did not know that the GraphQL ecosystem is so vast until I learned and I'm still learning and studying from this book, uh, Black Hat GraphQL. The authors have been kind enough to send me an advanced copy as uh, this title is going to be released circa Q2 of 2023 as far as I know. Now this book is a treasure trove of solid information and practical tactics for penetration testers and not only. And one aspect of the book that I want to focus on in this video has to do with recon and with accurate identification of GraphQL implementations. For starters, I did not even know that there are so many implementations for GraphQL, let alone all the things that can go wrong with these implementations from TypeScript to Golang to Ruby, Rust, Java, Python, just to name a few. So let's now begin by taking a look at the GraphQL threat matrix, which you can find for free on the GitHub of the authors. I linked it below. This basically maps the attack surface from a recon perspective on multiple types of GraphQL implementations. The check means that the feature is enabled by default, the exclamation means it's disabled by default, and the X means that the feature is not supported by the implementation. Now, let's see what all these columns mean here. Starting off with the validations column, this tells us how many validations or checks occur when a GraphQL query is sent for the specific implementation. You can see the very specific validations on GitHub. As an offensive cybersecurity professional, this would inform you on the potential ways to break these checks. Then you have the field suggestions, which is in place to alert or inform a client when a query contains spelling or other types of mistakes. And the key thing here is that if the implementation has field suggestions when such a mistake occurs, it would suggest the most appropriate alternatives. And for an offensive cybersecurity professional, this could turn into an information disclosure vulnerability. Query depth limit. This is in place to prevent denial of service attacks. In misconfigured GraphQL implementations, attackers can abuse cyclical node relationship in schemas, thereby potentially causing DOS. Query cost analysis. This is another security control in place to prevent DOS coming from queries that are computationally complex. The idea behind this is to set limits on the amount of resources that a single query can consume on the server thereby ensuring that a single malicious or misbehaving client cannot monopolize the server's resources, thus denying service to other legitimate clients. Automatic persisted queries. This is usually used to save a bandwidth by hashing queries, but it can also be used as a security check by having an allowed list of safe queries. We can see that in most implementations it's uh, disabled or not supported. We all know about introspection, right? An introspection query can tell us pretty much everything about the entire schema of the specific API. More often than not, it can be abused to leverage information disclosure issues. Now, from experience, in a large proportion of my pen tests involving GraphQL, introspection has been enabled and that's not good. As you can see, it's on by default in almost all implementations. Debug mode. This is exactly what you think it is. When enabled, it spits out a more verbose response, which can lead to information disclosure issues. Lastly, batch requests. This enables sending a sequence of queries all at once, and this can be a vector for DOS attacks. Okay, that being said, feel free to inspect this threat matrix whenever you're performing a pen test on a GraphQL asset. Now, here's a practical way on how I would go about mapping the attack surface on a GraphQL asset. First, I would use GraphWolf, which is uh, linked in the description, to fingerprint a target and determine the implementation. You could also leverage on the Nmap scripting engine for this purpose, but it's not as convenient as GraphWolf, which is a tool specifically designed for this purpose. Number two, depending on what the tool tells you, check against the matrix and see where you stand. If introspection is enabled, dump it uh, into GraphQL Voyager and further inspect it visually. At this point, you could go further by testing each API endpoint against OWASP top 10. Now, if introspection is disabled, nothing is lost. You could use brute forcing for further mapping the API. However, I won't go into details about this. If you want, go and find out by pre-ordering the book. 
or wait. This specific chapter on GraphQL Recon is available for free at no charge. Link below.